Doopy doop. We are live. All right. Welcome to Worldwide Slot Car Chat on Zoom, number 201. I'm your host, Greg Gow. The gang's all here. We got Mike and Courtney and Jeremy and Jim and John and Don and Dennis and Garth and Dewan and other people. Let's talk slot cars. Let's start off with show and tell. If you have something that you're working on or have worked on and want to show and or tell about it, raise your virtual hand. Uh, hopefully, Jeremy puts his hand up because I want him to tell about the thing that he's working on. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe not that's up to him go ahead john you're you're first hey, first again yay well it's, it's a sort of continue over from last week with the mysterious canadian who left me his orphan um <laughs> uh some people who actually watch watch this believe it or not greg yes uh a, a man named frank peter yeah I, we all know frank peter from all his wonderful work so he sent me a whole bunch of photos. Remember I said I had new photos, but it wasn't the real car, of, of a die cast of the real car. And I thought I would share those with you just to show you what yours is going to look like. That would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm, I'm the more I look at this, the more I think I'm going to end up painting it, to be honest with you. Um, but if you take a look, because it, this is like a, it's like a really, really dark blue. And then you just put all the colors on top of it. So I think that's probably going to make more sense than a decal. I don't know. I'll, I'll still pursue the decals, but um, especially maybe for the um, the printing and stuff. But this stuff would be not as difficult as I thought. I mean, if you say so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, did, I should show you my racing. I did my racing helmet. I, I pinstriped it uh, using my airbrush, and it turned out really, really well. So... Um, it, yeah, it, it's 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 just all planning, really. The other thing too is that the decal sheet that Leo got us, the, the blue here is a bit light, and and I looked at the other photos that you'd forwarded before, and it's like it's like a navy blue, almost black in some of the pictures. The other thing I'm really happy about too is that um, when I made the the body shell, and I, I guess Dennis, you can look at yours, the the front sort of tips up a bit, and that's the way it's supposed to be. What? Yep. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You see. You see. This is. This isn't level to the to the ground. I right? see that. Yeah. Which I was kind of uh, felt good about that. So it actually I done good. <laughs> but is this car accurate though? <laughs> yes, to... that's why Frank Peter sent it to me. Yeah, and 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 as you can remember, he's a stickler for accuracy. There's rivet counters, and then there's nail counters. I mean, <laughs> did you see the the pits of Rouen that he did? Oh my goodness! Yeah. And those are all from photos. So yes, this is the the race at Mugulo, and uh, it was done. The other thing too is there's there's a NACA duct there, which I'm just going to paint it because it's so it's so small. And these holes, they can be painted. So I, I think we're in pretty good shape here. And now I just have to do it. The only thing I have to do is ask um, uh, if it, the type of paint that was used on, on the car, whether it was a, a, an acrylic or an enamel or whether it was lacquer, because I just want to make sure I don't screw up what Chris already has done. So that's the only thing. If Chris shows up today or not, if not, I'll I'll, I'll email him and, and we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. But that's um, so... I just thought I'd show you that yes, I, I'm I'm de I, I'm determined to progress it slowly, snail like. Take, but, take your time. <laughs> but yeah, so so I, that will be a really really big help. So and and thanks again to Frank Peter for doing that. I thought that was really cool. And he's one of many who are watching, so it's very cool. Uh, thanks to Frank Peter, and thank you for updating us on that. And definitely looking forward to progress on that. And I'm easy mm -hmm. to please, so don't don't beat yourself over the head about it. I'm already pleased. You could slap some crappy decals on there, and I'd be I'd okay. The hell with it, then. I'll I'll just use crayons and send it to you. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, John. Go ahead, Jim. Okay. Let's see here. Um, we got a big race coming up in June with Revo Slot, so I got some new Revo Slot cars to work on, and obviously, you can see they're a work in progress. Uh, so I got a McLaren and uh, went together really, really well. It's a really nice kit. And it goes with the other two cars that I've got. So this is my three-car stable for Revo Slot GT2. Um, in the five, uh, in the 510, in the Group 2 class, um, I've added the Opal. And we were talking about this before the uh, chat started to be recorded. 
And so the Opal now is added to my Escort and my Datsun 510. I got the Datsun 510 running faster than the Escort, or right within a couple hundreds, uh, technically it was faster than the Escort. So those are both running really good. Uh, but the track that this big race on in June is on a commercial track. So I think the Opal is going to be the car to beat. Um, and the reason being, both of these cars have the longest guide lead, or, or I shouldn't say the long, they have the longest uh, of the cars that I have, uh, that I've measured them. The uh, McLaren and the Corvette seem to have the longest guide lead compared to the other GT2 cars. Uh, the BMW and the Opal have the longest guide lead compared to all the Group 2 cars. So that's why those two cars were chosen to go along with uh, the cars that I already have. Uh, the uh, Marcos is running extremely well on the commercial track, um, even though it's very short. It gets around the donut uh, uh, really well. So looking forward to getting these two cars on the track this Friday to test session. And we've got a sorry, to, sorry to interrupt, Jim. We're still yeah. looking at that McLaren. You're still looking at the McLaren. I'm not sure why it's going through on mine. I don't know. You maybe you shared the app and the picture popped up on a different window or something. Let me let me try. So what have you got now? McLaren and the yellow car, Opal. It says longer guide lead on it. Yes, it was yeah, that's the, that was the last slide anyway. So uh, <laughs> the other stuff was just showing it. I'm not sure why. Because it's did that change? Yep. Yes. Okay. So okay, I'll go back. I'm not going to start over, but I'll just show you the slides. There's the McLaren. There's my three cars. Uh, there's the Opal, all work in progress. These two are ready to go with the Opal, and then like I explained, the longer guide lead on that. So sorry about that, but that's it for me. <laughs> sorry for not saying anything sooner. I wasn't sure. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Jim and Don. Mr. Young, go ahead. Well. I've been wanting to get one of these, and I finally made the purchase. And it's all right. It's all right. And yeah. luckily, yeah. I listened to some of you guys talking about these, or somebody anyway, but in the way that they have the body mounted or the pod, as it comes out of the box with these, the screws here and here. Mm -hmm. And I went ahead and put it on this track. And every time it would come around this edge of the corner, it would make a god awful noise. Now, this is an R1 polycar curve right here. And you know, I'd pick it up and I'd look at the bottom and I couldn't see anything rubbing on it, but that's what it sounded like it was doing. Check the wheels, everything. But when I took those two screws out and put them back here and put it back together, it didn't do that anymore. And I still don't know exactly what was rubbing because there's virtually nothing on the bottom of the chassis that shows that it rubs anywhere. But anyway, it's, and it definitely runs better with those screws back here on the pod versus up on the side. But that's all I got. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to run mine yet. And I didn't even, I didn't even run it before moving the screws. So I won't have any comparison to make. <laughs> But that's Talking of which, have you have you seen the the latest uh, livery that they've re uh, released that NSR have released on that car, uh, the oh. Alpine BWT livery, the metallic blue and pink? Now you know I might be uh, I could be accused of being a little um, biased in terms of metallic blue and pink, but uh, it's absolutely stunning. Is that the one with the BWT on the side? Yes, that's the one. Yes. I think it's the fastest one they've ever made. It has to be. It's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it's a nice looking car. The I... metallic blue is a, is is kind of a, a a flat blue finish. It's metallic, but it's matte. And uh, in the flesh, it looks just unbelievably good. Yeah, that's the one. 
The only problem, of course, is they put a pink helmet in the thing. So, um, it's crying. That cars crying out for a, an Interlagos miniatures um, Alonso helmet. I think. And it's really, really pretty. At least you can see the metallic on these pictures, but they can't, mm -hmm. can't seem to find a an actual <laughs> large picture here. Come on, that's the same website. Oh, I, I give up. Yeah, that's cool. I think one of the guys ordered that one for the for the series. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Should be fun. All right, all done, done. Yes, yes. Deal. All right, go ahead, Tony. Okay. Are we still on uh, show and tell? Because I've started yeah, a bit still... late. Yeah, you so started you're... early. You started at six o'clock my time instead of seven o'clock. <laughs> the time changed. That's why I put that yeah. link for, for time zones. These are all the um, pre ordered that I ordered that just arrived. I've got those. Fantastic. Well, it's a great duo. Oh, uh, and, and MRC? He's a scale electric. Scale electric. Yeah. 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 And these are, these are a famous supermarket and uh, department store, John Lewis, and um, Waitrose, which is a supermarket, food market, which I used to lay all their floors and I've earned a lot of money off of these people. So I thought, well, I have to buy these two cars. So I've got those. I bought this one, which is a, a causeway. I've got this one here, which is a blue and yellow. Beautiful car. <laughs> yellow and blue, that one, yeah. Yeah. Does that still uh, count for you, Craig? Oh, yeah. That, Yellow uh, and blue. I'm about to this one here, McLaren. Nice. There's another McLaren. <laughs> the brother, yeah. P68. They're, yeah, one of the multiple Rothmans. I think this is a Ferrari. Prefer... No, it's a, a P68, Tony. That's P68, a that's right. Ford P68. Full P68. Oh, well. It just keeps on this coming. One? <laughs> uh, Lancia, yeah, that's a nice... BMW M1. Mm -hmm. Another BMW, SEX. Don't let that stack fall over. <laughs> Sorry? Don't let that stack of cars fall over on you. No, no, no. I die. <laughs> There's another SEX. I think that's an M1 as well. Yeah. And I bought this one, which is the Benetton's Scale Auto. <laughs> and... <laughs> They should have sent that to you for free. I don't know. I think they're done. I haven't checked the uh, bill yet. <laughs> well, I hope so, because you earned it. <laughs> yeah, see, this is a bigger than this one. It's really thick. Yeah. Yeah, they've done a nice job on that catalog this year. There you go. That's that's me done. All righty. Has your, has your mail carrier posted a, a, like a, a grievance yet for his hernia? <laughs> no, no. 
it just this like the incumbent in the post it was um D DPD or PDB or whatever you call it, I don't know. They're supposed to come Monday, but it come on come this morning. They don't deliver the next day like the uh, Royal Mail. Well, thank you for making us making us all jealous of your no, <laughs> no. like I said, these were these were all pre ordered. You know, I never know when these are coming. <laughs> You know, you all do them and you, you wait and wait and wait. Then one day they, they all turn up. <laughs> yep. No, no, I've got to find somewhere to put. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to be able to buy a bigger house, I think. You've got no room in there. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Tony. Go ahead, Jeremy. Okay. Um, I assume I'm working here. And a few months back, this track here, I had showed that we, we got it up and running. This was a gentleman passed away and his wife uh, was just trying to get somebody to take it. And this guy, Chris, took it and I had to build the light bridge. So I, I quickly, I build these pretty quickly in my shop uh, just to get you up and running. And that way I know if somebody hits it, it's solid, it's not going anywhere. But then I always tell everybody in the club, you know, if you, if I build your light bridges, give me time to get it get it a little prettier and I'll come back. So what I was working on, and this should be ready today, uh, I built this bridge that will, this will go down and cover over the top of it. He wanted uh, Mountain Dew, and then he's in Ely, Iowa. So uh, that will be on both sides. Uh, little for the Ferrari low or font that they have. Mm -hmm. And then I thought that was kind of funny. And I added some LEDs on light on top just so you know, race coordinator, if you use that, it kind of makes things a little more fun and interesting. Like it does um, red and green and yellow and stuff? Yeah, it does the time down, you know, like three, two, one, and it changes. And yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do with it. So just one of those fun things that I just like making little touches like that that make your race day better. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks for showing that off. Sure. I assume that was laser cut and then painted and... Yeah, the original file, you can find that on Etsy. A guy sells it for like three bucks, and then you just scale it to what you want. And then I think he has Heineken on it right now. And so you just, you know, you take off Heineken, laser yeah. cut what you want, done, done. Good that stuff. Oh, I made this one a little thicker because uh, there's no, I can't support the insides because it's got to go over the top. So I just use quarter inch uh, MDF instead of eighth inch MDF. So it's it should be a little chunkier and survive a little better. Yeah. Alrighty, anybody else want to do any show and tell, or are we moving on? Are you, Jer Jeremy, are you uh, taking commissions on uh, doing projects like that? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I could, but I need to know... Yeah, You have to have really good dimensions. Like Because I was able to go there and measure his, I was able to figure out how how it would fit over the top of it. But if I don't have those dimensions, it just I I have to rely on you. And if you if you're off by you know half inch, then it won't fit on there. But yeah, just reach out to me and I'll get I'll hook you up. Okay. You're a friend of the show. I'll hook you up. <laughs> All right. Anybody else questions or show and tell? Mr. Mr. John, you got something? Go ahead. Thanks to our good friend, John Kitt, I have a cheetah. Uh, it's a Strombecker. Cool. It's it's a neat little uh, toy, neat little machine. I think I'm going to build a build a brass chassis for it, but uh, I'm going to get it running as it is. I think uh, somebody sells replacement tires. Maybe it's super tires at at Cincy Slots or, or something like that. That's the brand, I think, is Super Tires, the polyurethane. But uh, anyway, that's the little cat. Well, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you like it, but I would save my money on the tires and just build a new chassis because they never really ran that well with the plastic chassis. It does run. I, I tested Oh, yeah, it, it runs. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I'm going to give you a bad car. What? Yeah, sure. And yeah. Well, there I'm goes our international relations. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> we would... We would have sent the first uh, Marine Division to uh, take Toronto. How do you anyway, think the How do you think the War of eighteen twelve started? We ended up burning <laughs> down your capital over a slot car. I mean, come on. Yeah, uh, those are Brits. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, and I guess some Hessians too. 
Uh, but uh, same yeah, thing. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Very Enjoy. Cool. Have have some, have fun with it. And as I said, and those were the ones that were made when Strombecker was making stuff in Canada. And honestly, you, if I put two of those in a box, I'll end up with ten because they just replicate. So <laughs> lots of them around. <laughs> cool. All yeah. right. Thanks. That's it. Thanks for sharing. Right. Uh, anybody else? Okay, moving on. Club Corner. Anybody got any? past, present, or future racing stuff they want to talk about. Jim's ready to go. Go ahead, Jim. Well, I figured I'd get my hand up first before Marco upstages me with probably the race of the century. So we had some uh, club racing here in Northern California last week. And let's see if I can share the screen correctly this time. How about now? Uh, Paul nope. Hendrick Speedboat. Uh, we're seeing we had a we had a race set. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. We're seeing the we're seeing the uh, the application, not the slide. When you hit play, I saw a little flash. Yeah. And then we're still looking at the original screen with all the slides on the left side. That's weird. Okay. So you want to probably want to hit play and then share the slide next time. Or is it changing stop. now? Nope. Nope. You need to stop this share, and then share the slide that's already open. That's what I did, but let me try it once more. I just want to say I'm glad I'm not the only one snacking. <laughs> I got three dogs snacking behind me. <laughs> now? <laughs> nope. You shared. I mean, I, don't, I can't explain it. All I'm saying is, okay, Yeah, if you click on this individual slides over there on the left, it, it works. So that'll work. That's what I'm doing. Yep. Yeah. Is it working now? I'm looking at Paul Hendricks. Now I'm looking at oval racing. Okay, okay, so you can see that now, okay. Yeah. Okay, we had a uh, oval race of Paul Hendricks. So you've got a, a blank slide with a text on it. Yep. And now you've got the Legends car? Yep. Okay, it's working, more or less. So we had an oval race on a, a very short oval track. It's owned by Paul Hendricks. It used to be at uh, Sidewinder Raceway in uh, Sacramento. And he rescued, he and Jerry rescued it. Jerry comes on our chat every once in a while. And uh, that's the track. It's fairly small. And uh, we only ran on the three lanes. because we don't, First of all, we only had five people. Um, the inside lanes got the little squeeze in it. You can see right here, there's a little kink and it gets kind of messy if you don't drive it well. So they run on the outside three lanes most of the time. And it runs really well. So it's, it's a fun oval. And the Legends cars look absolutely spectacular because that's kind of what they're uh, they're uh, made for is dirt ovals, even though they do run on other tracks as well. That transporter in the background is a slot car, by the way. I, we ran it after the race around the track. It looked really cool. Uh, the second class was Trans Am, which they've kind of turned into Saturday Night Special Bombers or whatever you want to call them. So they look a little bit different than the standard Trans Am cars, but pretty much Trans Am rules. And uh, here's the podiums. He has a special podium. If you win, you get a little bottle of stuff with your gnome. If you finish second, you get to sleep. And if you finish third, uh, he pulls down his pants and pees on the car. So that's the podium. There's the Trans Am podium. And then the final race was uh, IROC trucks. And these were a blast. These are SCX trucks. We ran them as an IROC race, and they redefined the term top heavy. So they were, they were, but they were a lot of fun to run. So that's that. Uh, we had a second race last week uh, in the middle of the week because most of us are retired. And we ran, I think it was the ninth round of the Le Mans proxy. And I put up eight. I think it was nine. I may be mistaken. Uh, it's the first time in a long time that I can remember we've run a proxy in Northern California. So I want to thank... Uh, Tony, which is Brumos, a.k.a. Brumos, that, uh, and Courtney for hooking me up with him. So that is that is how this happened. Um, there's the cars. It's Le Mans uh, classic proxy. So four GTs. There was a Ford Mark IV, Ferraris, uh, Porsches, one Chaparral. So a really good variety of cars. Uh, that's the track. Ted SC's High Sierra Speedway. The, the top side or the left side is very quick. Um, the near side or the right side of the track as you're driving it is very technical. If, if you can't get through that sweeper coming into this and then through the little technical section, 
you're not going to turn a good lap time. So it looks like a power track, and it sort of is, but you definitely have to have a handling car uh, to get through these uh, that tight section. Uh, I qualified the cars, and so uh, when qualifying was done, uh, Brumos came out on top with his four GT with twenty five k. I believe it was twenty five k shark motor. Courtney had a uh, was it what is yours a forty k? We lose Courtney. Well, I think I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure 30, it's a 40, 45, 40 k. 45 30, k. Oh no, you're right. You're right. Forty k, piranha. Forty k, uh, yeah, but slim can, yeah. And that car handled great. In fact, um, I thought after qualifying that he was going to win the race. So I think just the way it drove, it drove to the S's just like it was very light on its feet. Brumos's car was a little faster, but it was just a different drive. Um, just incidentally, the Can-Am track record on that track, which is similar rules, but obviously a little bit lighter body, is 481. So we're right in the ballpark. These cars were really fast for proxy cars that have to be able to run on different tracks. So very, very impressive field. Uh, we got four drivers, local drivers, uh, uh, except for Mike is from San Jose, and he is hosting the next race at Silicon City, City Speedway this Saturday. They've already qualified the cars, and I think it was the same qualifying order. Uh, Brumos was top qualifier. Courtney was second for this coming race this Saturday. And then that'll be the, the, uh, the series for this. That's the last race for this series. We had a little oops moment. Uh, we did do uh, like a... 20, 30 second practice before the race, before each heat. So the driver could get used to the new car he was running. And one of the guys decided that Courtney should start from over here when he actually finished over here. So he got about a half a lap head start in the last heat and they were tied going in the last heat, hundred laps each. But in the end, uh, this was the finish. Courtney was about three quarters of a lap ahead of Brumos in second. And you see where the lap counter is. Um, so when we took that into account and tried to roughly estimate where Courtney would have been, I think he would have been about there. So margin of victory was probably about three feet. So we had a great time. Here's the actual, uh, top five, the podium Courtney first, uh, we had some, some scoring issues I've mentioned before, or if you're, if you're on home racing world, the Brumos car, which is a silver car actually finished second. We've got it third here in the podium. Starfighter Ace was actually third. And so, Courtney, you did it. You won the race at the uh, High Sierra Speedway, and I think you'll probably do well at the next race at uh, um, Silicon City Speedway, which is going to be this Saturday. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be driving in it, so you're kind of on your own. The car ran flawlessly. Uh, the, the top two cars, even though the racing was really close, I thought the top two cars were not in a league of their own, but they were a little bit ahead, and I expected to, expected them to finish first and second. And being only a couple feet apart at the end, uh, with a totally different combination, it's just pretty pretty amazing. So uh, that's it for me for NorCal. So we had a big busy week. Way to go, Courtney! Well, yeah, well done, Courtney. Well done. And I wanted to get that in before uh, Marco steals my thunder. I didn't want to have to follow. <laughs> the greatest race that I've ever seen in my life that they just ran. I don't know. I'm thinking I'm thinking Jim might be giving Courtney some preferential treatment there. <laughs> no, actually, well no, you uh, weren't driving though, right? <laughs> I was not driving. Uh, the guy that finished fourth was GS No Point, uh, Glenn from Maryland, and he's a good friend of mine because he used to live out here. And I actually built the car. I built it for somebody else, and that somebody else sold it to to Glenn. It was a it was a, one of the cars we used at the Electric Dreams Enduro a year and a half ago. And so it was a really good car, and it raced better than it qualified because he didn't have a lot of motor in it, but it, it was just really easy to drive. I'm surprised the green chassis that he had on it, the super hard NSR, lasted the whole proxy. Uh, but, you know, the car ran really good, super easy to drive. Yeah, I think he's qualified third for this coming race this Saturday. So if if I had any preferential treatment, um it would have been for him, but we tried to, you know, like I said, I didn't drive in the race. We had five drivers and you have four drivers in the race and you have one person qualifying it. So being that there were five, we decided to split it up. One driver would qualify, the other four would race. And so that's how that came to be. So, so Jim, what does he win? Like, does he get a little prize or like a hundred bucks? What, what does he win? I'm shaking his hand virtually. <laughs> and his check, and his check, his virtual check is in the mail. <laughs> virtually. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the report, Jim. 
Jeremy's got his hand up next. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to share my screen here, maybe. Did it share or not? I can't tell. Not yet. Not yet. There we go. You should probably hire a technical guy to I do should, that for you. I should get somebody smarter than me to do this nonsense. All right. So uh, this is Back Alley Speedway. This is the owner, Terry. He has, uh, down here, he has a road, or uh, oval track. He, was, he had a five-lane oval course that he started out with. And then when he joined us, we all do... Uh, you know, more road course races. So eventually he wound up getting a road course. And I helped Terry at the beginning of the process because he wanted to see how to lift it up. And I've, I've lifted my track up. So he lifted it and put it over the track. And this did create kind of one funny thing is he took the wiring and just ran jumpers up to here. So you still use the old stations, but somebody set their controller down on one of the lanes down here and that whoop, killed the controller. So anyway, uh, track is up and running. Uh, everything so far uh, is running good. Let me see if I can get past it. So you start over here on this side and I don't know why, but they do a staggered start. Uh, they put the furthest car to, in this lane all the way back here, which I think I would have switched that. I'd put the farthest car on this lane, but anyway. But it's a figure eight, so. Yeah, I, no... I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't ask questions. I just, I just show up. So anyway, he had this track routed for him uh, by a guy here that helped him get set up. And I guess he didn't ask for these squeeze tracks, but they got put in anyway. So right here in green and red, there's a squeeze. And then there's a yellow and blue squeeze you have to be aware of. And it, it only, it bit me at the beginning once or twice, but then once you figured out if you're in the yellow or red lanes, you're usually fine. It's these two lanes that get the worst of it when, when you do get squeezed. Um, let's see if I can get to, so, Right here is the start line. Oh, sorry, is the video playing? Start yeah. line, and there's a staggered start for you. Uh, other than that, I mean, it was fine. I, it's it's very technical way back here in these curves and sections. Very hard to drive. You, you have to go really slow, but then you can pick that speed back up here. Now, lucky for me, like when I showed up, I was nervous because I haven't driven uh, very technical in a long time. But when I started out in digital racing, with uh, my home track on a four foot by eight, all I had was R1s. So once I kind of got the hang of that, I was like, oh, this is easy. I was just like driving the old R1s and then then sped it up. And I think I I must have won more races at that this test day than I've won at any one event ever. So I don't know if that's going to continue or it's just I got lucky because this is kind of a test event to see how everything would go. So where, other than where, that. Where's the lap counter? Uh, This is the lap counter down here. Uh, so... When, when I reach out to people in our club, I always tell them, hey, uh, if you reach out to me, I can get you set up for like less than 50 bucks. We can be up and racing. And I would have put the lap counter over here near the middle on either either side of these, you know, of the bridge. That's it, where I would have put it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where most people would put it. I don't know what's going on here. I wasn't involved at that point. I just helped with the beginning and then nobody asked me anything, but that's okay. But so How bad well, were all the crashes at the end? Well, of the that's I was going to say. One of the races where we were racing for the lead and I could look on the chart and this was it. And as I came around this corner, I just floored it and I just smashed into this corner. But I won. I was like, I don't care. It was a win. <laughs> but there's a few times that where people are just smashing through here. And I, I'm a, I'm deadly afraid of what's going to happen when we reverse the track and go this way. Because if you're racing for the lead here on this straight, if you're on the blue lane, oh, you're okay. But if you're on green and you're racing for the lead, you would have normally won it. But now you've got to go all the way around, and you're going to be gunning mm -hmm. it. There's going to be so many crashes right here. And it's a very long – I don't – I was going to say that's like three to four inches of dead strip. And so it just – I don't know what happened here. But I guess that, I guess that's one way to do it. I mean, the length isn't that big of a deal if, you're, if your car is traveling. <laughs> but – right yeah. at the end of the straight like that yeah <laughs> or the Coming beginning way, if they go the other if you're way you're not going fast enough i assume <laughs> it's gonna be a little well, hairy but it's his track he can do what he wants <laughs> it's his track everything worked i mean there there were like i said there's only a few crashes and uh and it's like our i think this is our 13th track in the area but nice. one tracks one track is leaving uh so we'll be back down to 12. jeremy what car were you racing well, we had uh, we raced like six different classes. There was like a an open GT class, a, a slotted classic, slotted group C. I mean, we, just a little bit of everything. 
Uh, this guy here is known uh, by our friend Jim. He had the fastest GT I have ever seen in my life on the straights. Once he got to this part, I could pass him. But then on the straights, I could not catch him. So it was a good time. Good time had by everybody. Nice. And that is it for me. That's a good looking track. You got, you got speed. You got technical. Yeah. Yeah. Other it's than interesting. Maybe put the <laughs> lap counter somewhere else, but hey, you know. Yeah, one day. <laughs> it, is, it is what it is. Yeah, it can be changed. Yeah, it can always be changed. All right. Thank you for that. And Dennis has his hand up. Go ahead, Mr. Samson. All right. Just something for John Weber. Uh, you were talking about uh, brass chassis under um, under uh, Strombecker cheetahs. So here's one that you can look at. Mm. It's just a little, um, it's a, I don't recall, maybe it was a, a Polycar Formula One a slim can motor and uh, just a little brass chassis. It actually runs really, really well. So uh, that's just a little bit of um, motivation for you. Go for it and uh, you'll, you'll love it. Uh, I used the, um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, these, I think, are CVD uh, wheels, the, the five-spoke classic wheel, and it looks really good on the car. That's the uh, that's the model uh, kit version of the uh, Cheetah, isn't it? That's the older version. I have no idea. Probably, quite possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very cool. Very nice. Okay, yeah. that's me. Cool oh, I'm, I'm just on, on that, John, if I can find some pipes that I have loose, I can maybe cast some for you because that one, the car I gave you didn't have any, any pipes. He says, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, most, thanks, most of the ones I've seen uh, have a, a very simple pipe. You can't see any of the headers. Um, you know, the, the, the headers aren't visible. Uh, just it's just a real simple uh dump pipe exit. yeah that's that's the way cox had theirs which is i guess closer to the way guys actually raced the car yeah but whatever anything <laughs> anything would be great yeah cool all righty moving on Bob, you got your hand up go ahead I, I do this is really a question i don't have anything to show but uh here in cincinnati we race on silicone primarily okay which is fine but I know the West, this is a question for you West Coast guys. So, you know, I see the, the videos that Jim Rose does on tire truing. And, you know, I, I have uh, natural rubber tires that I've been, um, you know, the super grips, whatever, uh, the, the AS or whatever, the G25. But are your tracks rubbered in? Because I don't really see much rubber on the track for the, you know, for the rubber tires. I'm just curious about this. Well, they... Our tracks are rubbered in, but you don't see much on it. They don't leave a residue as much as like a foam tire would. Okay. So if you the track that I showed in that video, if you look closely going onto the straightaway, you you will see some rubber, but not like you traditionally think you would. Not as much. Yeah, it, it's it depends on what you're running and how long you've been running those things on it. Most of the wood tracks in in my area do show a blue groove pretty pretty clearly in the turns and out of the turns but we run all kinds of really really soft tires we use uh, scale auto foam rubber with the scale auto tire softener which usually ends up helping leave leave some some rubber behind a lot faster than other kinds of rubber tires do yeah uh, but are you actually seeing rubber or are you seeing dirt and oil that's just stuck to it could be yeah <laughs> i think it's actually rubber Whatever so the case too. is, it's, um, it's what we're talking about, right? <laughs> if you looked at the track at Electric Dreams this weekend, if you look closely, you'll see like this layer of gray because we were using the AS20 tires all weekend and the, the traction got pretty, pretty uh, insane by the end of the day. And um, so, you know, you can, you can see it building up. I mean, I've watched these videos and it looks like there's a rear guide on the car. They're so hooked up. And you don't see that with silicone, you know, they just seem, you know, while you raced in the 24 hour race, Dennis, you know what I'm talking about. They just don't seem as well hooked up. Well, well the, I think it's that... on the track too, because uh, let me go back and share this real quick. Um, before, before you go, uh, Jim, just a little 
um, answer about the silicone tires, the way I see it and the way that we're racing here, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, I, I, I don't want to say that, but putting silicone tires today with so many options that we have, it seems like a, a lazy option uh, because they're true to the wheel. They're easy to put on. You don't have any work to do and everybody's racing the same thing. And if you really work on a rubber tire, if you get the, 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 the correct compound and we have some, and put some time into it, the results are much, much better, either on plastic or wood. Um, this weekend, Ivan was here and he was introducing his new line of uh, foam tires. And we never kind of believe on the foam tires here at the Let's Dreams because you always clean the track. Uh, and he was showing me like, look, try it, try it. Because every time that we try uh, foam tires on 132nd scale cars, we're either like a JK tire cut off or something like that, or some sort of adaptation. Uh, and we put some of those, those foam tires here on the 132nd cars that we're racing, and they're unbelievable. They change everything about the car. The car is much softer. It's much nicer to drive. So I was telling, I was showing Dennis too. We tried the GP cars that they have, the new 124 scale uh, metal chassis GP cars, uh, Formula One thirties, uh, and they are amazing out of the box. So we might be trying in the future some of those foam tires. And if you put on a scale, uh, racing silicones is just like probably the last option, even for plastic track. I used to believe that they were, they were great for plastic track. They might be good if you use magnets, especially heavy magnets, because the silicone tires, they don't have much of, of, a, of a play. So they're going to stay the same same uh, height all the time uh, compared to, to rubber and, and other materials. But um, if you guys have a nice group, if you guys have a nice track, you should try at least uh, improve to rubber or maybe foam because the experience is going to be completely different. Plus, you're adding something else to your racing. You're adding the the tire touring and the tying or the tying uh, job because that's that's a lot of fun too to try to find the correct compound to try to find the correct correct right height and size and if you're gonna go uh, round in the corners or not. So it's 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 a it's a different game. I think with that many options, that many manufacturers, it's it's just a little bit lazy. Just go with silicon tires. And and I'll be the the devil's advocate here in that all that stuff that you're saying is fun is fun for some people but not yeah. fun for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so if I as absolutely a group, hate truing silicone, I mean it's such a pain. It's hard to you know, oh, yeah. it's even worth the, the time. And you time. know it's so much easier to true a rubber tire. Um, and um, you know like we're running um, Formula One on a Carrera track. All the other guys are running silicone. I've got one of the um, both an NSR and the scale auto. And I just run the natural, the tires that came on them and I just glue and true them. And it, it it's, it, they run fine, you know, but I can't get these people to understand that. So Can I was just curious. I, I like share something on the subject? feel of the car. I, I don't feel when I, I, I've driven silicone, not for quite a while. Uh, but to me, it's kind of a, it almost feels like a magnet car. You get to a point and it breaks and releases. And a Correct. rubber car, I think drives in my opinion, it drives better or nicer or whatever you wanted to call it. Um, and so I like rubber. What Marco said is absolutely true. Unfortunately, that tire truing and compound is another whole art in itself. And uh, so that's good and bad, like Greg said. Uh, so can I, I can I share something on that subject? Yeah, uh, go ahead, Jeremy. Quickly. So this track here, before we got it in our club, was all rubber. And I don't know if this is like rubber with the it's like a compound i don't know what it is but it feels weird and i assume it's just like dirt goop rubber whatever but we race silicone because we have a kind of a joke in the club where somebody when they do run rubber and they do really well they do jim rose's line like oh i sat on it for eight hours boiling it every 20 minutes and babysat because like jim has a whole video where he does that and the people in our club they're like nah i, I ain't got no time for that so i it, slowly as we switch to this track to be more silicone everybody erases silicone. It's just not that good because it's not a shiny coat. It's like a dull coat painting that was used on it. So the rubber hooks up better right now, but slowly I think the silicones are starting to take back over as, as they get more of that rubber out of there. So. Well, it's hard anyway, to run, I, them, run them together because they don't play nice with each other on the, yeah. the tracks. Yeah, we but do. I don't, I don't think there's any question that if you have a tire, if you have the same track, run silicones on it, prepare the track for silicones and then rubber on it and prepare the track for rubber. 
I don't think there's any question rubber is going to be faster. That doesn't make it better, but it's a superior tire in terms of lap times, in my opinion. Well, that's one of the things we like is that everybody gets a silicone tire. You don't got to spend, you know, eight hours babysitting it. And the guy with the best tires is not going to win every week. It's going to be the best driver. So that's just one of the things we've taken eliminated from the situation. And, and that being said, uh, what I did two years ago, I don't do anymore. We don't do them eight hours in oil anymore. We're, we're running them more out of the box, so to speak, because uh, the tires are getting better and getting stickier. So, guys... Yeah, it wasn't a knock on you. It was just funny. Oh, no, no, everybody but, was like, yeah. how do you true the tires? And I always point to your video. And they're like, hey, uh, no, not going to happen. Yeah, because it's but, a long process. But it's it's not a long process like it used to be where I would true, I, I would oil them for a half hour every day for two weeks. We don't do that anymore. For, for all the technical skill that I have, uh, oiling those tires and selecting all those different different compounds of urethane and rubber and what have you, it's just another way for, for me to beat myself. You mean beat yourself up? Over and over and over again. <laughs> beat yourself over the head, you mean? <laughs> well, no, not exactly. Just, you know. Get better, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. The learning curve is is pretty steep on that stuff, uh, and uh, you know, you. I don't know. It's it, <laughs> since whatever. we're on the subject. Um, I recently published a setup and use video for the GNS tire grinder. So if you're subscribed to my channel, you've probably already seen that. <clears throat> if you haven't gone and seen it, uh, and you're curious about the grinder and the intricacies of of using it that video is available. I'm also doing a very overly detailed, probably, but more or less by request, because the expected users will be very new to the whole concept of tire chewing, a uh, document detailing the setup and use and maintenance of the machine. And in, the, in both of those things, I detail the technique that both Jim and I talk about with uh, isopropyl alcohol. Um, <clears throat> and it, you know, I don't do the oiling and stuff <laughs> anymore either, really. Maybe just one drop, you know, if they're if they're NSRs or something like that, I'll do one drop, you know, before race day or whatever. <clears throat> oh, just one more, one more, one more quick comment about rubber. If you're running at a local race and with friends or you have a local club, if you take a set of NSR tires, super grips, whatever, mount them, true them, you can true them very quickly, put one coat of oil on them, and they'll run really good. I mean, really good. But if you're racing at Electric Dreams at a national level with Ian and Todd and those guys, that does take it to another level. But that's no different with any other class of cars. When you get to that level of competition, things change. So I don't want to scare people off from rubber tires. You can put a set of rubber tires on the car, true them real quick, run them, and they'll run great. Yeah, and, and different compounds have different truing techniques. You know, stock rubber on a Scalextric car, you know, it, it's, it's decent enough rubber, but it trues pretty easily, you know, compared to a lot of the other tires that we use. Greg, um, I did watch your video today, and I do have a question for you. Shoot. Um, at the beginning, when you talked about tramming the steel, uh, the sanding drums, mm -hmm. I was kind of curious. You were using metal wheels, and I was kind of curious as to why you were using tires as your gauge when you had true steel wheels there or metal wheels there that probably would have been more accurate. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy pointed that out, and that's why I, I went back you, you, and, and added a little subtitle to that section that using metal wheels is better or removing the tires is better. And in my document that I'm writing, that will be more specified, but I didn't want to redo the video. <laughs> I didn't okay. want to, have to reshoot that whole section. So I was yeah. watching it while I was working, so I might've missed the subtitle. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. And and I'm, you know, for when I build the machines and, and tram them, I, I made this little thing I call a tram helper, which is basically, you know, 3D printed cone shaped wheel things and then there is they're like almost as wide as the whole sanding spindle is <clears throat> um yeah you know <laughs> I, I was being silly for that part and jeremy pointed that out and you pointed that out there's a caption in there maybe i'll i don't know put something else in there like i said i didn't want to reshoot the whole video the document will be much more detail oriented 
I should have been the that, I it was great. in the video. <laughs> uh, thank you for that, though. And thank you for watching. And and any other feedback is is welcome because then I can put it in the document. But I I did want to talk about uh, the whole silicone on track thing. One of the guys in in our club has a, a routed wood track, and whenever he buys a car, the first thing he does is put silicone tires on it, and he races all his cars, plays around on his track with silicone tires all the time, and his track is rubbered in pretty well. <clears throat> and I'm like, how, you know, how does that even happen with silicone tires? But you know, I think Brian was the one who ch chimed in and said maybe it's just gunk, maybe it's just. <laughs> dust and, and other stuff that has been just kind of been bed into the track. But when we go racing, we don't use silicone tires. So we go racing and we use, you know, whatever NSR or slotted or, or, you know, Revo slot or whatever rubber is on the cars with our truing and, and treatments and whatnot. And, and they, they don't run super well at first, but they, after practice is over, they usually run a bit better. Uh, the the I think that the grip goes off a little bit faster at his track. None of the other guys run silicones on any of their tracks, <clears throat> but he does, and it's not the end of the world. But like we always say, every time we go over and race on his track, and, and one of us is muttering about him running silicone tires, like we run his IROC cars, there they have silicone tires on them, and then we run our rubber tires. So there's always somebody muttering about the whole silicone tire thing. And it's like, you know, well, we're all racing on the same track. We all have the same situation to deal with. So just deal with it. <laughs> but, you know, there are pros and cons to silicone. There are pros and cons to rubber. You know, trying to so, convince a group of silicone racers to switch to rubber is a, that's can, an can I, can, I, can I ask? So urethane is off the table with most folks? Nobody likes urethane tires? No, we, we run urethane too. But they, they have their pros and cons as well. They're not quite as grippy as silicone on a clean track or rubber on a rubbered in track. It depends on, you know, what's available for the car. Like, like if a, a lot of times when we run, you know, scale extric or, you know, whatever cars, the only decent tire that's available for them that fit is urethane other than silicone. So usually when we run those cars, we're running urethane tires. Greg, you don't find like if you run rubber after running silicone they're just not all over the place they're not loose as can be any tire runs well on a really clean track and the silicones will basically clean up the track yeah so they are running they run okay but not as good as on a rubber din track mm. the silicones run better on a perfectly clean track the reason I ask this is because one of the tracks we run on is it's it's wood, it's glued. We only run foam. Well, we had a race with NASCARs. I don't know what it was. And one of the guys had silicone tires on. We didn't realize that. Oh, yeah, that's a whole And other. it was like driving on ice after on that lane after he got off. You know? Yeah, but you were running but you were running foams that are supposed to run on glued track. Yeah, right. That's a whole different kind of ball of wax. Yeah. That, so his okay. car was basically stripping down the it, blue layer. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was nasty. Okay, That's a big no-no. Not, not when you're going from silicone to rubber without any glue. Not, don't find that not nearly as bad. It's, it's a, there's a difference for sure, but not, as, not like that. <clears throat> and not like uh, <clears throat> if you ever go from running urethane, like a lot of like everybody's running urethane for hours and hours and hours, or that's the only tire that, that the track owner runs on. There's urethane dust everywhere. But the urethane tires don't care about that. Rubber tires, a little bit, but not so much. But silicone, that's an absolute ice rink if you run silicone tires on a urethane run track because of the urethane dust until all the urethane dust is picked up by the silicone tires. And then they run OK again. Yeah. OK. <laughs> yeah. That, that's basically the decision making process of what kind of tires to use comes down to what, el what everybody else is running and what that track usually has run on it and then you go with that because you want the best possible grip that you can get so if you put a silicone roller behind a car you can clean your track <laughs> yes in <laughs> fact a lot of the like the, the the those pink rollers that they're like washable lint rollers those are sticky silicone things 
Yeah. Anywho, anybody else got any racing stuff they want to talk about? Are we going to hear about Electric Dreams' race? Does Marco want to do that? Does Dennis want to do that? You guys going to fight over it? Fist no, I just, I just want to say that was we have like this great race, uh, 42 Chrysler racers, 35 show up, a lot of excuses on the last minute. But um, it's all online. If you go to the Electric Dreams uh, YouTube channel, you can find the race. Uh, we shot it with 10, 10 cameras. Uh, it was pretty good. Mark Natividad and Craig Wills and some they were commentating live. So if you watch it, it's, it's pretty entertaining. Uh, if you go to the last 20 seconds, uh, the race was literally decided on the last uh, lap uh, after qualification, after quali, after heats, after semifinal, and then the final, which was like five minutes, two minutes longer on each heat. So it was a hell of a race. Everybody was like glue it to it and uh when Todd crashed one uh, two two corners before the end of the race everybody was just like whoa spoiler uh, alert yeah really <laughs> yeah i know everybody now knows now but if you guys go online and watch it it was a pretty cool race even was here we shared a bunch of new stuff there's some new 124 scale gp cars that were very excited about it uh all his new line of gt cars are lower and wider so they're going to be very fast uh, and I want to leave the invitation for you guys to come for the next big one, which is the Slotted Nationals. For that race in August, we're expecting 75 racers. Uh, so that's going to be big, and we are doing more improvements on our broadcasting. And uh, this is the race that if you want to come to a race, you need to hurry, because last year we were sold out three months in advance. And if you want to watch, come to watch, you need to buy a pass because we need to control uh, people around the track. We have limited space. Uh, this year, we're planning to install a bleacher. <laughs> yeah. So there's going to be a bleacher inside of the hut. The, 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 the store is going to be a broadcasting booth. Um, are, are you going to have full-scale pit girls this year? No, but we might have a flyby with drones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very serious about it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I believe that. Yeah. yeah so it's 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 a it's it's the event to come. I know that some of you guys are far away, but if you if you want to not only come to race but meet a lot of people, uh, Greg was here last year, right, Greg? Uh, everybody's gonna be here. Jim Jim Rose needs to be here. I'll be there for that race. Okay, there we go. Everybody's witness here, right? Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so if if you, uh, I, I'm gonna put out. On May, uh, we're op uh, going to open for registration in May. It's going to open during the UK Slot Car Festival. Uh, Michael Nimas will be here. He might he might do a workshop, uh, which is pretty good, the, the workshop that he does in Germany. Uh, the workshop is going to be held at Scott's house by his toolbox, which is kind of cool. Um, so anyway, it's, it's a big event. It's, the scale auto was amazing, and we've been improving and improving those races. Uh, the whole format is is it's it's great now. On, on Saturdays we have key one, key two, and key three. Uh, the pole position was uh, was divided by two thousands of a second. Um, and of course, uh, we're talking about those top racers, but we find a way during the field. Like there's a lot of people. Uh, the heats are decided by 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 the qualifying, so you're racing with people at your same speed, hoping to get on top twelve. So. It's kind of cool uh, format, and I like a lot. And I think even if people were racing the 50 heat or the C main or D main, they're they're having fun. Anyway, I just want to tell that the race was amazing. If you guys have some time, go to your YouTube channel, check the last 20 seconds of the race because it's really nail biting. And uh, keep in mind the the slotted nationals coming in August because this is going to be the big one. Mark, right. Travis put up a video this morning on the on the recap of the last heat. Oh yeah, I want to watch. I watched it. Travis yeah. yesterday. Yeah, it was it was an interesting race. The whole race, though, because uh, the two top qualifiers, Todd and and Ian, uh, <laughs> because they got lane choice, selected the two opposite strategies. Um, Todd started on yellow, which meant he ran yellow and black and blue for the for the first three, which are the three shorter lanes. And Ian started on white, so he ran white and 
red and green as the first two, as the first three. So by the time we were halfway through the race, there was a five lap difference between Todd and Ian. And I was sitting there with a friend of mine and we were saying, yeah, five laps, there's no way that he's going to yeah. catch that. Right. But he did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I think Ian's experience uh, showed when, uh, because he was very relaxing and he was doing all his, his strategies. He stopped the car to, to check the braids. He spoke with Todd. He spoke with Herman on the other side. And he was coming, and he was coming fast. He he made the fastest lap on the last last heat, fastest lap of the day. And I think Todd uh, with uh, Todd is some Todd is very technical, probably one of the best guys to set up a car right now here. But uh, he started racing one year and a half, two years ago. He won a couple of races, but not on that pressure. And Ian was just coming for him. And uh, when he came for him, when he was about to overtake him he was like five five to seven feet behind thought crashed and then he and passed you guys gonna yeah, watch i, I, I really thought crashed. that even in in the in the fourth heat when when um ian was on the yellow uh, which is a fast lane it's the qualifying lane um he didn't have the greatest of heats he had a couple two or maybe three yeah. uh offs in that heat and i thought oh well now it's mm -hmm. over Oh, but right then, now. then he went on to black, and he had an absolutely magic black, um, really good. And then on to blue, and uh, that was where he he um, he caught up the last two laps, and because uh, yeah. they were on blue and green, right, which is like the two center lanes. Yeah, and side uh, by side. they were side by side, but uh, uh, he chased him down. It was yeah. it was, it was one, a hell of a race. It was one hell of a race and um and I think he, Todd lost the race on the very first heat when he was on yellow and uh, Ian was on white or red and he only left Ian one time. If you compare uh Todd's yellow, uh, Ian's yellow to, to whatever Todd was, probably left him like four or five times. So I think he lost there. And on the on the on the on the uh, on the um, between heats, I stopped. I talked to to Todd. Say, look, Todd, the second place you already have, so you need to push like it's qualifying because he is coming from you. And I think that I I want to believe that kind of changed his pace. And then he was almost six laps ahead of him at some point, and then he came back. Anyway, great racing, high level. Uh, the cars were fast as hell. They're doing five threes with no magnet and rubber tires. We change only one thing on the the rules for this year. You can use a Lexan driver instead of the plastic drive, which make the cars at least two tenths faster. Uh, for some, some other people couldn't adapt because it was just too fast. Um, we might do some changes during those big races, as I probably not gonna give the motors before the race. Um, for the for the Mars Lot car for the NSR Western Nationals and for the Slotted Nationals, we have numbered and seal number uh, motors. But I, I noticed that the, the motors are coming here too differently. They are doing something with breaking in or something like that, which is not, which is something that is not available for everybody. But we, so we might change to motors to be installed on the day of the attack, just like European races. You give the motor, you install the motor, no break in, good luck. We might change for that. Uh, this last year we changed for spec tires. So everybody uses the same tires on all those races. We even made a yellow tire with NSR. Uh, we use the gray tire for the scale auto, um, and we might have a new yellow tire for the slotted, uh, which it kind of levels the field. Of course, some people have more uh, skills to through them and make more grip, but the motor, the motor was a little different to, on this race, and I think we're learning from that. So we might have an European model where you give the motor and you install in front of the race track. To, to give you an idea how hard these guys were pushing it, Ian and Todd were quite honestly, by far the fastest two cars. In a race like that, if you come out more than one time in the whole race, you're in trouble. And they came out two or three times in the last heat. That's how hard they were pushing it. It was amazing to watch. And uh, just to blow my own horn, I'm going to do an interview tonight with Ian and Todd. That I'll have on my YouTube channel talking about the race and strategy and everything else. So looking forward to that. Very, very nice. And if you want to check Ian's car, we made a video literally hot off the presses with Ian showing his car and open up and showing you everything that he did to the car. So it's on the, our YouTube channel. Did he show so, you where he hit the magnets? 
<laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, so, right oh, under the oh, tungsten wedge. Sorry. Sorry, Ian. So, uh, Marco, I noticed that, you know, Ian drove a Spiker. Was that the popular car? Uh, well, from... the Spiker, the Spiker was always like a good choice. I remember that Herman drove it last year and everybody went towards the, the Viper. Uh, there were some people were kind of uh, happy about the, um, the Callaway, which is this guy here, uh, which is the new from the new generation of, uh, of scale auto cars. Compared to the Corvette, which is apparently I have here, it's a little bit longer, a little bit wider, a little bit shorter. Uh, so this could be like the new, it is the new generation Corvette. They call the Callaway, uh, from Callaway, but here in Southern California. Um, what, what was Todd racing? Uh, Todd was racing a Viper, just like last year. Todd had a very nice... Um, spiker too so people just went to the track and saw what, what it was what they were more comfortable with uh rick jokan who came in third was a spiker too but apparently what happens here is that if somebody racing on, on top they just try to copy yeah that happens everywhere yeah but todd was um todd that like six months ago he started to use one of those true speed controllers uh, that dennis Senso has been using for since i know him uh and apparently it was the new thing and everybody started to get those and i tried to get those here for sale and steve stopped selling to me but sold to my customers so they start to show up with a lot of them and i think uh with all the respect i think it's a little bit of, of overkill too many buttons you don't if you haven't even figured out your car how you're gonna go to the controller well, and at some point how do you know it's your controller or is it your car I had I had one of those synapses with the uh, LCD, so I'm kind of kind of an LCD screen. So I'm kind of a nerd too, but uh, I don't know. It just sounds like an overkill. And uh, Todd did that, and everybody starts to use that. And then somebody if you show up with a car, everybody's gonna show up with the car. Uh, it's just like the Nissan on the Nationals. Everybody raced the Nissans now. Like sixty percent of the grid was a Nissan 89C. Anyway, it's just like if you look to the fast guy, try to copy, and uh, when people see Sal, Todd, and Ian uh, figure out the spikers, people try to go in the same way. But I mean, if you look at the if you look at the whole field of thirty whatever thirty plus cars, um, the distribution was uh, a little different in that there were a lot of Vipers, there were a lot of spikers, but there were a lot of Corvettes as well. Yeah. And there were one or two Porsche 911 that uh, actually ran really well in the in the lower heats. Um, no Mercedes and no Audis, and I like those two. No Mercedes, no Audis, and one NSX, oh, yeah. uh, which was mine, which, which didn't do very well, but that was not the car's fault. Um, so, you know, it, it, uh, obviously uh, it filters at the top, but for example, I mean, the guy like Herman uh, had prepared his uh, Spiker and had prepared uh, a Viper and had prepared something else possibly. Uh, he didn't race any of them. He raced one of Todd's cars because that specific car was more, he was more comfortable with. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, it changes on the day. Uh, but yes, in general, the Spiker was a very good choice for this race, I think. And Ian so it's like just that, switched you know, to a, to a um, true speed controller too about three months ago. Sorry, say that again. Uh, Ian switched to a, a true speed controller about three months ago. Yeah, he had been running a third eye all the, all the time. Yeah, now he's running, yeah he's still the, running he, a third eye. So. His third eye has a choke, which is kind of. Kind of important. Well, anyway, the, the I think I think, I think well. it would be good with a Defalco DD three hundred two. It would be fine. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the final, Eddie was running a Defalco, and um, uh, Herman was running a Third Eye, and there was um, uh, what was, and then Rick Jockham was running a Cobra, and then there were three uh, those three, and then three uh, Apexes. I have my default. Oh, I'm I'm mute. You were uh, you, oh, now. You're, you're muted now. 
Now so, you are muted. Yeah, Marco, you're you're muted, Marco. We can't hear you, sir. Oh, I, I have my defalco here, but as you guys can see, I became insensitive. Oh, you, you, lo you lost the knob? <laughs> yeah, I lost my sensitivity knob. Oh, man, there's you nothing, lost there's nothing worse than a guy losing his knob. <laughs> yeah, and becoming insensitive, so. Marco, how about uh, how about house controllers for for an event? Yeah, we do that on the far out races that we've held here. But people, there is always somebody to complain. There is always like a left-handed guy. Oh, it doesn't work for me. Oh, ha, ha. It's just like okay. Mark, yeah, did, so you say, did you say you're not getting true speed controllers anymore? No, we place an order, but um, I, I know Steve very well. I've been talking to him to doing. A, but bigger business than just selling his stuff. But uh, uh, I placed an order for 10 of those big Apex ones. He delivered one. And then I thought it was in back order. And then people start to show up with those controls. Say, where are you getting? Say, oh, we're getting straight from Steve. Say, come on. And then I say, look, can you send me those 10 that I ordered from you? Say, oh, yeah, I'll let you know when they're ready. So kind of we lost on those three, three, three four months when, and when Todd started to helping them to sell the controllers, promoting it. We kind of lost, like now everybody here has one and I, I still don't have it here in stock. Yeah, I, I know people that have, I don't want to mention names, but have bought from him directly, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we have a racer here who bought eight. Obviously that was your order for 10. Well, I would like to get one, but I can't find one. No, we're gonna have, we're gonna have it in a month or so. Put me on the list. All right. Wow, so you are so you're full for the August race already, Marco? No, no, we're gonna open the registration in May during the UK Slot Car Festival. And uh it, it goes fast. Last year we were sold out three months before the race. And this year, instead of 72, we're gonna open for 75 because the top three qualifiers they're gonna go straight to semifinals. And then we have a little bit more people. Wow, that's very cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a nice event. Even if you're not one of the top drivers, you just to come here and hang around with all those cool guys from all around the country and some international people too. And knowing Maurice is going to be here and knowing new stuff from from him and learning from him, that's that's kind of a and the the, the whole event is wrapped around with other things. Like we're gonna we're probably gonna have the NEMA's workshop. All the registered racers they can go to visit the museum. We provided a van from here to the museum, so the museum is included. Uh, we have like a live uh, podcast with Mauricio when he shows new stuff and new projects. So the, the, if you if you are into Zot cars, that's the place to be in during this first weekend of August. Now, and do you know if anybody from Europe is coming? Any any, any folks? Well, Michael Nimas is coming. Mauricio is coming. I, I'm working with uh, Fola to come here to race. So it's going to be fun. Cool. Marco, I didn't pay somebody to mention my name during your podcast with a scale auto. I I, I didn't understand. Sorry. Uh, I didn't pay him to mention my name during the podcast from scale auto. <laughs> okay. My my jaw dropped when I, I was watching it live. That's fine. That's fine. Who who was was uh, her the guy from Texas? What's I can't. Oh yeah, uh, Jeffrey. Jeff, yeah. Yeah. Jeff was good. Well, that's the third or fourth race of Jeff joined us from Texas. And he was one of the semifinalists. That was Herman's car from last year, I think. Probably, yeah. With the spiker, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Not anyway, you guys, you're, you guys are invited. Let me know if you need uh, from guys, uh, drivers, uh, racers from outside of the the city. We don't charge for registration. Actually, we charge, and then I give you a. A gift card afterwards to cover it. Uh, I can. Uh, we offer airport pickup, and that sounds like a joke, but it's not. We have a van with an airport shuttle sticker on side of it. Yeah, but hold on. We, we heard that you were doing the driving. I don't know. I, maybe I'll take a taxi. <laughs> I think Actually, I said something about that, Marco. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Actually, last Sunday, Eva needs to be at the airport at four fifteen, and uh, it was just like when we when the race finished. And then I asked one of the guys here to take him, and the guy out of nowhere, so I don't like to go to LAX. I said, "Give him the key." So I went there. Wasn't me. It wasn't Carlos. Carlos is here. <laughs> so I pick up the van and come back, and Ian was waiting for me to do the video of the breakdown of his car. And then when I come back, he said, well, "You're back from LAX." And then I checked the cameras, took 19 minutes to go back and forth. 
from here to LAX. And, and I had like, I had to say goodbye to, to Ivan. I spoke a little bit of more there. So, yeah. So are you selling, are you selling insurance policies as well? <laughs> insurance <then>? policies. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. But again, we, um, the event's pretty cool. If you guys have some time and you have some a budget to do it, uh, we're going to have a food truck. We're going to have a DJ. There's going to be a deal with a local hotel so we can pay a little bit less. It's the whole weekend of involvement. Come here on Friday, practice, get the car ready Saturday, qualifying Sunday, the big race. Bringing Travis in? We try to bring Travis. Travis is becoming too expensive, but uh, yeah, we try to bring him. I work cheap. I work cheap. <laughs> You're local. You're not coming from Australia. Uh, yeah, well, well, yeah, Jim, you just said gas money and a bag of Doritos, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That'll Why do you need this. money for gas when you're going to have Doritos? I mean, the Doritos come with the gas, right? There you go. <laughs> well, you haven't. You got to wait for the gas to be made if you have the Doritos, though. Hey. Um, there you go. Yeah, Marco, are you going to talk about the Scale Auto uh, 124 scale cars a little more or not? Well, the GP cars, right? I don't have one here. He took it all, but uh, took more back. Oh. He took all back, but yeah, yeah. he is making uh, the GP cars. They're pretty nice, um, actually. Carlos, do you mind picking up one of those scale autos? Uh, uh, 24? No, the, the catalog. The catalogs. Catalog. Yeah. yeah, these are a whole range of 1930s Grand Prix cars that they're talking yeah, about me, in 124 scale. This, this is a very nice surprise. Can you guys see it? Yeah. There yeah. Oh, you go. Oh, oh. Classics. Yeah. yeah. Yes. There's uh, three different. Uh, auto unions, three different Mercedes mm -hmm. and two different Maseratis right now. Yeah. So um, there's there's a couple of things that I, uh, internal information. So he brought the Maserati who was driving greatly and then the gear went off. And then uh, we have two of those auto unions and they made a mistake on molding and they have the, the, the driver is too small. So they're going to they're gonna redo this. This is our resin body with the resin driver. Uh, and they're gonna sell to us uh, cheaper the ones with a uh, with a smaller driver. So we, we're probably gonna see soon a, a good offer. Marco, just sell those as Nuvolari. Nuvolari was a small guy. There you yeah. go, <laughs> Marco. I see. Are those new track pieces on that next page that they're offering? I have scale auto track, so I'm interested. Yeah, there's a lot of new stuff coming up. Uh, new track pieces, lane changes. Uh, they're gonna have like. Uh, they're gonna offer just like polycar those uh fits, yeah to fit on a four by eight. Uh but if you check the scale auto catalog, uh and if yeah, you it's a full stuff, catalog. Yeah, it's a full catalog. <laughs> they have a lot of um a lot of scenery stuff. Uh no, that's not scenery, that's a paint. Uh let me see. Well, that's what you do, you paint the scenery, right? You paint the scenery, yeah. So they're gonna have a lot of scenery stuff like bleachers and and signs and stuff like that. And uh, uh, believe it or not, this is gonna be plastic and painted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and cheaper than the, any other wood kit that you need to work. And, and so it's it's even works a lot. I need to tell you, he stayed at my house and uh, he came here just for the race. I picked him up on Friday. He left Sunday just after the race. And I didn't see this guy doing anything else than working. And it was, it was a very intense uh, situation for me because I had to drive him back and forth. And even during lunch, it's just like numbers and business and trying to figure out what he's, he's doing and, and more stuff. I learned a bunch of stuff. He has, he, they literally have a factory in China. It's not like he's hiring a factory. He has a factory in China. And there's a factory in Romania also doing wheels and sponge tires. So this guy works a lot. Um, if you guys don't know, Scale Auto comes from Creek Crack, which is the probably the number one store in Europe. It's a over 40 years old store that was founded by his father. And now Bernard, his brother, takes care of it. So this is kind of a conglomerate, a group of slot car racing. And he invests a lot of time. And I, 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 I thought I was a workaholic, but this guy just... Is so way ahead of me. It's just too much stuff. Uh, scale Auto, if you guys place an order here in the order, if, if you put it in the comments that you want one of those, we can send one for you. We don't have many, but I can send one for you. It's a bunch of new stuff. But coming back to the GP cars, 
uh, they made a mistake and they made 50 cars of the two new auto unions and they're going to send to us they're going to sell, sell it for cheap uh cheap normal with the discount and um because they're coming in a couple months with the correct molding and uh the the final product is going to retail at 119 they're going to come with rubber tires with the proper wheels on it and it's just as a white kit with decals because those cars are just one color so we have to paint them and put the three or four decals with the numbers and the logos of the brand and that's it uh, the only thing that is a little bit difficult for me is the, the driver is not painted and that's a lot of work, but he might put in the market to a version of the painted driver so you can buy separately to put in your car. But we drove those here and I... Yeah, they ran really that, well. They were a lot of fun to drive. Before qualifying during your, your break time and I invited people who are sitting at the electric alley to come and test it. And when I see people are competing, trying to beat each other's time, uh, <laughs> which was fun. Well, the first thing that I did actually was to turn the brakes up and drive it a little slower because they look so good. You yeah. want to see them. And the, uh, the, 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 the rest of the guys are racers and the tails are fishtailing around yeah. and the guys flat out. And I'm looking at it and hang on a moment. This the, These are going to be driven a little more sedately. But uh, yeah, they're, they're very, very nice cars. The the quality uh, yeah. of those cars, and and indeed the quality of everything that Scale Auto are building right now yeah. or making right now has improved by leaps and bounds over the last two years or three years. Um, it's, it's, the stuff it, uh... is so much better than it was. Uh, the tempo printing on the new cars, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the the whole range of uh, hypercars that they're coming because they have. The Porsches already, they've got the Peugeot coming, they've got the BMW coming, they've got a Cadillac coming. Uh, uh, one they're, one they're, the, the, the hypercars, they are very, very pretty. And um, if you see the new uh, the new color, the new liveries on the 963, that fancy multicolored livery and then the, yeah. the Penske liveries with the multiple stripes, the one with, that's red and white and the other one that's red and black, um, the the tamper printing on those things is just gorgeous. Yeah, the the Penske cars, the two new Porsche nine sixty three from 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 Scale Auto, they're coming. They're on the way to the store already. Uh, I'm working with Even because Even is Scale Auto. If you compare, especially in the American market, if you compare to NSR and Slotted, you know how much a Slotted car costs. You know how much a Revo Slot will cost. And you know how much a Sideways car will cost. But for scale out, it's a little bit different because he offers. We we are we were becoming their distributors here, uh, but a couple of stores, a couple of stores, they can buy directly. And for for the for the past five years was uh, before we started working with Ivan was a little bit. Uh, the brand was a little bit uh, put on the side. Nobody had every single part. Nobody has all the, the the parts available. The cars will come and go. Nobody knows about it. The new releases. So now we're going to be focusing and trying to put like a price. Uh, I work with him here for, for two days in a row to figure out the, the correct price for those cars. And what is happening now, if you want to buy a scale auto, I suggest you do in the next week because they're going to go a little bit over on price. Uh, and between us, I know that's live, but what it was happening is people were getting straight from China and putting just the standard uh, as a just getting straight from China with a distrib distribution price and putting just like the the, the standard 40% the whole industry puts. So they're selling very cheap. So you can get a car that is supposed to be like a R series that's supposed to be the same price as an SR at 8899. You can find in the market that those cars at 63, 64 which is not the correct price and doesn't do any good for the brand selling cheap because now you're comparing to Scalextrix and not with the NSR. And I believe that if you, if you get a Mercedes AMG from Scale Auto and one from NSR and you have the same guy setting up, they're going to be very close. So they're professional slot cars. And uh, we're trying to figure out the price. The hyper cars, they'll cost $99.99. And that with, with the hard chassis and the new R3, RT4 pod. Uh, and you can get a, a white kit at 74. So we, we figure out all the prices, uh, the, the margins, and uh, if you want to get a scale auto car, our prices are already on the online supposed to be. 
But uh, if you go online and, and find other stars, you should get uh, Scale Auto Car in the next two weeks because they're going to go up. A little bit, but yeah. That's cool. That, now, do you have any other events before the big one, Marco? That uh, uh, We have on? monthly races. The next one is the GT Class, uh, which is the same car that you can use the same scale auto car to race. Uh, we started uh, Tuesday night races, like like a gentleman's driving club. So people come here out of work, don't, doesn't have much time to try. There's no qualifying, you just go for for the race. And that Tuesday night races, we have three classes. We have a slotted DTM. We have uh, Andy Rowland's uh, Formula One class from the UK, where you can race poly cars. And you can have 3D printed chassis on fly and scalextric cars. So it's, it's just like pure to correct stuff. There's no invention. And um, by the end of the year, you're going to race the LMP cars. So so is that on, on the big track or is it on the polysteel track? On, on, tu on Tuesday nights, we're going to race on both. At uh, the Cunningham Raceway and at the Sanson Raceway. Right here, that main over here. Yeah. I hope uh, he thinks. Yeah, there you go. Okay, that's that. That's pretty cool. Because you can you you can't can you put twenty four scale cars on the uh, on on, on the, the 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 wooden track? Yes, we we don't have the the lane separation and um, Dennis can help me if I'm wrong. I think the one twenty four scale is four and a half. One thirty second scale is around three and a half, and we have right in the middle of four. So yeah, so we can even race those big BRM. Uh, Porsches. Uh, it's tight. Yeah, it's you... easy to run. It's easy to run twenty four scalers on the on the wood track because it's four inches separation yeah. in there, so it's it's fine. So yeah. those, those 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 vintage F ones from Scale Auto would be perfect for that. Oh yeah, they're great. They're, they're, they're great. great. They're yeah. absolutely great on there. Yeah. Very cool. Wow. Another thing. Another thing. Um, Mr. Zlatkar, the new Shadow, the one hundred one is coming. Uh, you'll be here in a month and a half too. Uh, that's another big thing because the the, the the first one is almost sold out. They they sold almost two thousand cars, and the new shadow is coming. So if you wanna to make the pair, you'll be here soon. So it, so it's gonna have its running mate soon then. Yeah. yeah. And I don't well, know why they're gonna have a white kit, but yeah, okay. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, so I, how about, I how about the, uh, Sorry, go ahead, John. Sorry. How about the uh, slotted uh, Group Two cars, uh, Datsun? Yeah, there's there's uh, only the there's only the Datsun right now, and uh, that's something that I I follow very close it close it because we are very close to John Morton here. Uh, John Morton drove to Clayton Cunningham, who is uh, who works for for the boss and who is the father of Kristen, who who works here. So John Morton was here at the podcast. He was here at the slotted Nationals last year. And this was something that Mauricio always wanted to do it as a as a personal project because he loved the car, and he has been working on that for a long time. I remember uh, I was in Italy in May last year, and uh, he showed me the first drawing of the car. Uh, the problem is in the difference was, and uh, I don't want to 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 point fingers here, but uh, BRA, uh, BRM and the Rivos lot they did the car before. And they're very close to each other. There's like 40 minutes from one factory to the other one. Uh, but they, they didn't apply for a license. And um, Mauricio went to BRE with uh, Peter Brock and his wife to get the license. He, he went there and spoke with them and showed the car and everything else. And he got the license from BRE. And he got the license from Nissan. So it's, it's going to be one of the very first slot cars with a license. To be here. The problem was he paid everything for the license on Nissan, and Nissan changed the company who handled their licensing. Uh, it used to be a company that it was here in San Diego. Mauricio did all those uh, 89Cs and the 390 GTs cars all with the license from the same company. He had a good relationship for 20 years, and right in the middle of this process, they changed it. So Mauricio is holding the car. The car is supposed to be ready before the beer, the, the Riva one, but he's holding and waiting for the license to to get that. So that's that's the problem. And uh, I don't, I I didn't hear about the second Group Two car, but uh, I'm pretty sure that it's gonna make a line out of it. And uh, we we have we have the prototype here, the story. We race it. That Dennis actually was the car that opened the Samsung Raceway. 
and he ran well. It's uh, it's very very similar to a DTM car with a little shorter long shorter wheelbase and with smaller tires. Yeah, I've driven it. It's, it actually runs very nice. Yeah, out of the box for a prototype I've made out of resin. It's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, the, the the whole process the the car is not out yet because he Maurice is doing by the book and uh, he had some problems and then uh, his competition kind of jumped the horses and yeah. it was very I successful would, because uh, of the uh, the Alfa Romeo GTA would be in the car too since, since probably since forty miles up the street from from uh, Reggio Emilia so yeah yeah probably. Mauricio, Mauricio is in love with the lunches too, so we might have setting something oh. there. Especially if, if you go group two rally instead of just road courses, you might have more options. Yeah. Hey, in that catalog, you showed some terrain pieces. I'm just curious, how well do those kind of pieces sell? Do Are they pretty robust or... Terrain pieces? What do you mean? You, well, like the building, you showed the buildings. Oh, the buildings, yeah. yeah the, like, the does that sell stuff. well for you guys yeah. or is it okay? Yeah. So they sell well. We represent magnetic racing here, which sells like uh, kits, like three D printed, two uh, D, three D cutted laser uh, stuff, and uh, we sell well. Um, but again, it's just for people who has a scenery track and he wants to invest time to putting on it. Uh, it's not for everyone. Uh, we plan to put here on the on sensor raceway. We plan to put that there, but then. After the first weekend watching the action around the track, we have a lot of ki kids jumping on and cars crashing all around. And, and I'm even afraid about the glass on the display. So I'm, I we cut it off. But uh, I think we, we sell well. If you have like a home track and you want to decorate, they're very nice. They're easy to paint, easy to assemble. But what scale order is coming, it's just a little bit different because Carrera and Scalextrics, they offer those kind of stuff. Scalextrics rely on old moldings. And uh, two years ago, they released a new bridge or a new something like that. And it took like a long time. It was just two models. Scale Auto is coming, everything ready to go. And you ship flat. It's something that you assemble. It's, it's it, the, the only on shipping, you're, so, you're going to save so much money on cost. Well, the Scalextrics building that were re-released were resin, weren't they? I think they're plastic. No, I thought they were res. They they tried to sort of be similar to their vintage stuff, but I thought yeah, no, yeah, it was was a real release of an old mold and a new mold of something else, and that was two years ago. So so right now there's no big company doing it. It's just like he, of course, Carrera has their decorations, the scenery, but that's the same as 10, 15 years, and uh, they come with this that is folded and you can assemble it's pretty cool it's kind of right in between the the, the the ones that are ready and the magnetic racing and the there's another company in the uk that does too but uh i think magnetic racing is the top one but yeah we we sell well but it's it's a very specific specific niche uh i remember that we had a couple of years ago um dennis might remember the name where's dennis dennis left oh my god right now dennis anyway there is like a paper there's a company that make buildings out of a paper. And yeah, there's a website was... you go to, like Papercraft, and then you would just print no, no, it out. it's printed. It's printed. It's very well designed, and it's printed. And you just cut off and fold the paper, and you have yeah, like a one. Building. You have you have a couple of those on your yeah, track. Right? Of innovation technologies. Yeah, but um, uh, we got that, and there's a lot of people who bought it by mistake and didn't know where it was paper and return it. And I I wasn't very happy with that, and they stopped buying it. But uh, they sell they sell kind of well. We sell everything that we got the first batch. But I, I wasn't happy to deliver that thing. And they're cheap. They're like fourteen bucks each. Yeah. Well, so Marco, how much of a demand do, do you you get at Electric Dreams for scenery items, figures versus just cars to race? Not, like, not much if, you, if I compare it to European stars. As you, as you guys know, I I try to visit as much as European stars that I can do to to learn with the people. And we don't have a big, big, big market for things that you need to put your hands on. Like if you go to slot car stores in Europe, especially especially in Germany and Spain, they all sell uh, model kits. Not only to put slot cars underneath it, but because people also like model kits. Here we don't have that demand. Of course, we have Hobby Lobby on this uh, here, on, like two blocks away, that sells uh, at a discount. Like if you can buy a Mustang for fourteen bucks, so there's no way to compete. But we don't have any demand for that. We used to have those GTT, GTT trees and decorations pieces. Uh, yeah, and uh, we stopped carrying because there was not 
people searching for it. So what I believe, and that's something that we're always trying to see, is that uh, the customer of Electric Dreams, and if I know, if I see my my my, my competitors, they don't sell it either. So I think the American guys, they don't want to put much stuff together. Like even the even the white kits, we're very limited on white kits. I don't I don't order many because we don't sell many. Uh, of course, if you go one level higher, you start doing white kits. Like Dennis always gets white kits, but it's 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 very very small. It's very small. People want things new, and I think that's that's working for for almost four years here at the store. What I learned is that people here in America they want to accumulate. So there's a bunch of people hunting cars that is like three dollars cheaper on cheaper on eBay, even if they're risking or even if they pay more for shipping than to get the car, um, because they want to accumulate. They want to have like this large collection. They want to say that they have five hundred cars on their garage, and they're not going for quality, which is something that I'm trying to understand. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, we don't we don't. I I I wish I could sell more. Uh, but uh, no, we don't. Like I was in Germany in Wiesbaden, and they was they were having those gorgeous one twenty four scale races where they take care of the body as much as the car, and they're perfect cars. And if somebody crashes, they stop the race, stop everybody, pick up the car, don't crash the car. And Michael Nimas takes the cars back after the race to do body job, body work on the car. So he fixed and charged the guy just to fix a fender on his lot car. And we have a similar race here. We used to have at Buena Park when Keith Tanaka's put the hard bodies. And the, if you see a picture of those cars, it's just like a bunch of buns getting together around the track. It's just like they're awful. People aren't even painting the cars, just like putting like stickers on it, and that's it. So it's kind of a the culture is not there yet. It's something that I wish I could change, and I wish I could do the little movements, just like the GP cars from Scale Auto coming. It's kind of already, but you need to do some effort. But right now we don't we don't we don't we don't have much. Well, I think what, you, what you're describing, I think what you're describing though is the range of the hobby, right? I mean, th there are some people who enjoy yeah. the scale aspect yeah. and want almost like yeah. a racetrack like a model train set, and others just want to go fast. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have a customer here, and Dennis know his, knows him well because Dennis put chips on and make like uh, uh, specific liveries because the guy wants to have the whole grid. For one specific race, Le Mans or GT, whatever it is, a whack, and he puts on a digital career track those twelve cars racing together, and he just watches. It's it's the slot car voyeurs. Yeah, he actually he doesn't drive them, and he just he, he, he doesn't drive them. Paints he them watches. all, and he puts them on the track, and he he, he uh, sets them all up as ghost cars, and he puts twelve cars on the track, and. Off they go. Yeah, I think that's and he watches because... them run around the track. And, well, there uh... you go. That's one thing model railroaders have over what we do. I mean, a model railroad is like a mechanical fish tank, right? You just you can set it up and it goes in the background yeah. and you can do your thing. It's t I would I'd love to set up my track like that with two cars just going around while I'm working around. It would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, that's 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 my feeling. I think you need to be in a high level of the hobby to to get a white kit and uh we have different ways to enjoy it there's people who just collect there's people who just watch there's people who come here to race there's people who couldn't care less about the decoration it's different different levels different levels there's people who doesn't know how to throw a tire even if they're five years into the hobby and doesn't want to yeah we're all over the place yeah and I don't. I see that as a positive, targets. not a negative, because I, there, there's, there's, it's like food. There's no bad way to enjoy food. There's no bad way to enjoy this hobby. Yeah, John. But, but for me, I need to figure out because I'm doing the, the, the purchasing here. So it's when I have a guy say, well, "How come? How come you're gonna get only six white kids?" Yeah, that's. Should I, should uh, I mention how difficult this is to run as a business? Sorry, <laughs> I should have mentioned that. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's tough, man. I mean, it's, it's like Baskin Robbins, man. Thirty-one flavors. <laughs> yeah, too many, and they keep coming. They keep coming. They, 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 there's companies closing, and the companies opening, and there's new guys doing new guides, and and suddenly Jim Rose shows up driving with a new guide that I don't have, and people say, "How could? You, how do you don't have it? I need to buy from Professor Motors." And <laughs> they they just released last year, last week. How can I figure out? 
<laughs> and th things get like it's it's too much. Like the last order from from Slotting Plus, which is Miguel, is just like the, this amazing engineer south of Barcelona. I went there and I tried to figure out and understand what he was doing because he is not a car manufacturer. He only does do parts. And we went to the club. He showed me who are the guys developing stuff. So this guy is Slotting Plus is one of the best uh, parts uh, provider that you can find. So he has this new axle that you, it's kind of a, he has a video how to install, have to glue and turn around, but makes like this perfect front wheels independent system. And he sent me an email, he explained to me, I ordered some for have to this race. And then I, okay, that's my, my, my job here is done. And then people come to me and say, you know, how can you don't have this the dependent system from, from, and then I figured out just today that we had here sitting for almost a month and then people forgot to put in the system. So it's just like, <laughs> and then if you don't have one part, not only people get pissed with you. I don't know why. I don't know why. why I don't know what the way I own to these people, but one part. But not only that part. Nobody's buying one part for my comparison. They're buying a whole thing. Maybe even the car that they're going to use in my event. So this whole thing it's a mess because one single part that somebody forgot to put on the on the system. Well, interlaced with you trying to actually figure this out logically, you're dealing with illogical people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Support, support your raceway. Nothing again against my competitors, but uh, what are we doing here? It's bringing back the golden year of slot cars. I don't want to brag about it, but if you were here during one of those events, you're really enjoying slot car racing. There is nowhere here in America close to what we're doing here. So if you... Uh, I do attest to that. Yeah, being a novice and not uh, really a competitive racer, it was an experience of a lifetime, and I'll be coming back. It's always fun. It's always fun to have this great camaraderie here. Uh, last Sunday, I had to yell to some people a little bit because they're not being educated. But uh, I keep I keep the uh, 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 tight ship here. So it's you, you here. You, you coming here? You're guaranteed that you're gonna have fun. You're gonna mingle. We're gonna networking. You're gonna learn a lot of stuff. Well, that's that, that. Well, there is another good question. How many how many family events do you have? Is that something that you're focusing on at all? Uh, we have the kids league uh, that happens during the, the summer break. It's four races. It's all free. Um, last year was sponsored by SCX, uh, so we're still racing the SCX cars. Uh, it's out of the box. You can do anything. We have a lot of loaners. We don't charge any registration fee, anything else. You just come with your kid. And race at some point we have 25 kids racing because wow. i'll tell you what we've started in canada believe it or not, we have a professional women's hockey league first of all they're dirtier than the guys but that's another issue i mean what about a women's league i mean that you could get some people involved for sure yeah yeah when why not we're just running out of dates actually but yeah <laughs> i suggested that up here a single mother's racing league but nobody yeah. <laughs> well, same. what about the single mothers under 25 with only one kid and wealthy race yeah. <laughs> well, well let, let's go yeah. a little bit higher on the age for some of us but yeah <laughs> well marco they they have that but it's at laguna seca it's at laguna seca yeah Maybe single grandmothers racing league yeah. <laughs> uh, one, one real quick comment too is when you go to the race like the last weekend and the slot at nationals upcoming first of all it's by far the best races I've ever been to. Thank you, Jim. The guys at the top, the the Ians and the Todds, and even Rick Jockham, they're really helpful. You can approach them. Uh, at last year's slot at Nationals, I think Rick had six cars in the race. So the unlike the days of those golden days of slot car racing in the 60s, where it was cutthroat, it's still it's still extremely competitive, obviously. But those guys are more than willing to help uh, newcomers and share secrets for the most part. You know, you don't expect the top guy to share every little thing. It's not the way it's supposed to be, but they share pretty much everything uh, to help you make your car better. And that's great for the sport. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 I mean, as a competitive person, you, you don't want to win with people who aren't competitive. You want to win legitimately, like make it a real, a real win. Yeah. If we could just sh slow down Todd and Ian a little bit, yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> now we just got to catch up to them. That's yeah. Or we can move the building and don't don't tell them the new address. <laughs> well, you, you know, there's there's an old saying, Jim. Their standards are high, so up yours. 
Well, yeah, when I when I talk to him tonight, I'll tell him that there's a new building going in and they're not going to know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they'll just follow the smell of wintergreen. They'll be yeah, follow it. <laughs> anyway, guys, I just want to to share the 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 the, the news for the race and uh, and and invite you over for the the nationals. That's going to be a big one, and uh, it's going to be the center of stock car race in America this this first weekend of August. And uh, if you're coming from us outside of California, we move the the race for for one week earlier because in the next week you have the car car week at Monterey. So if you want to stay a little longer, you can enjoy that. And uh, especially because we invited a lot of VIP guys to come here. Let me show you something. Uh, and uh, most of them couldn't come because of the car week. So we changed it. We changed it. Here we have like a letter from Mr. Bob Hayhaw that's mm -hmm. back with the invitation saying that it's going to be here next year. So kind of cool things that we have this advantage to be very well located here in California and close well, to them. And that, that's only because he has a slot car track, right? Yeah, don't yeah. He's, yeah, he's the other course. guy, yeah. 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 Well, don't forget, all those racers, man, they all started off with slot some car. sort of slot car track. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Well, one other real quick thing while we're on the subject of Electric Dreams is it's intimidating to go to a big race like that if you've never been to one before. One of the things that Marco's done, and he did this last year, hopefully he'll do it next year or this year, I don't know, is there was a special practice for out-of-towners. So they were grouped in groups of six or seven, and there's only six lanes. And you got about an hour and a half by yourself with, you know, with six other people to run on the track and get used to it. So that was a huge deal, in my opinion, for guys like guys coming from Texas. Instead of having just this go and – and get minimal practice. If you've never been to the track before, you get special practice. It's, yeah, it's, that's sure. It's not like that special room in Animal House for the new plebes where everybody just sits there and stares at each other, is it? Yeah, if, yeah you, if, you, if you come to race with us, you get a badge, and um, that's with your registration in a, in a, in a lane yard from the manufacturer. In the back of the badge, you see the whole schedule for the race. Oh, cool. so we don't miss stuff like that. And then you have last last Saturday we have the um, special practice during Friday, Friday for three hours, only out of the town people. And um, the good thing about that is that the locals hang around and they help. So little stuff like tires and and pod movements and stuff like that they help out. So it's a big time for improvement. Um, yeah, and um, during after qualifying, qualifying happens on Saturday. And on Sunday, uh, Saturday night, you get a you get a PDF on your email say, uh, telling you what the time that you're going to race and the time that you're going to marshal. So you don't need to be here early in the morning. So you can come only only on the time that you're going to race. So now, now, is there food? Yeah, the, the we didn't have this weekend of the food truck. The guy literally broke down a week before, but uh, we do have food trucks coming. Especially for the nationals, you might have two. Cool. That beats having like a Coke and a Kit Kat just before you run, huh? Uh, I'll tell you something. One of the food trucks is Brazilian street food. It is good, man. Really. The tacos were great. It's the only. It's it's the only time in the year that my wife comes to the race. Yeah. <laughs> for, <laughs> for the food. Yeah. For the food. Yeah. You just got to be careful not to have too much. You get you'll fall asleep at the control. Yeah. <laughs> now are you are you also having tours of the museum as well? Yeah, during the nationals you can qualify. Last year, last year we kind of opened for our visitors too, but this year is only the racers. Uh Philippe Delespinay gives the tour. Um now he's 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 not driving, is he? Like is he's driving in the race or is he driving on the street? Because that's that's a challenge. <laughs> yeah, he he's he had some problems with his here and uh no he's not he he came he's supposed to to race last year but he didn't came to i i feel for him for i feel it in for two heats just to show his name on it but uh yeah he's not racing he kind of retired from racing as he says okay okay yeah, yeah he his, his eyesight isn't big enough for that anymore yeah uh, yeah but anyway, that, that stop him in race cars and full-size cars but uh, stop cars are a bit much is he still driving on the street oh yeah, yeah. Like oh. we, me and Carlos, we went to his house last week. 
because we're talking about his uh, old uh, stock for TSRF stuff. And then we need to drive to Brian Warmack's place where Philippe has an office. And we got into the van and just, I just saw that Mercedes coming. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah I, I hear he drives a car like he's riding a motorcycle. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. 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 His, his, his house is a museum. It's, it's amazing. Oh, his, his tin, his tin car collection is, uh, yeah. Is real. It's, yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, he, and he knows everything about it. It's it's so, incredible. So you, hold on, you're acquiring his TSRF stuff? Not yet. Oh, because you know what? I I maybe I'm the odd person out, but I really like them. Yeah, I I did a, a monogram Lola T70 with one, and oh my gosh, it, they run so well on a on our yeah. track, and they're, they're great fun. Uh, last couple of weeks ago, Dennis put together a couple of kits for me, and we test on the plastic track. They're amazing. The only thing I need, Marco, is that, you know, that plastic thin, it's like a thin guide, not a pin guide, right? Yeah. There was a retro uh, thing with a metal pin. Yeah. 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 And I, I that's the one thing I don't have for mine. Um, oh, we have it here. Okay, cool. All right. That, that's awesome. Because th those things are great. They're basically the, actually, I'll show you. Hang on a second. They're one of these. You don't think I have everything at hand, but I do. There's, they're one of these scaled up, uh -huh. right? Remember this? Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the Cox. Yeah, the Cox yeah, yeah. one forty third scale. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. But and and these it's, again, being in Canada, um, I, I used to go to Leisure Dynamics as a kid, and I was the only freak who bought these directly from the distributor. And they they went great. The only thing is they were just kind of undersized, but you know, I. I I had Eldon track starting out, which is kind of like, you know, the first lump of crack, mm -hmm. right? And then you move up, but uh, they ran great on, on Eldon on one lane. And then the other lane, it sounded like, you know, you know the clickety clack all the way around. So, but no, the, that's exactly what a TSRF chassis really is. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we we figured out maybe a relaunch relaunch of the brand because it's 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 old now and uh, they're still very good. So maybe a, a relaunch or maybe not selling kits. As I was telling you, people are not very fond of putting things together here. So maybe we have the cars ready to go with the body on it. Well, the other thing too is that that whole thing started out as a bet, from what I understand. I don't know that. Yeah. Oh, it's a great story. Have Philippe tell you the story. I don't know about that too, but yeah, okay. <laughs> well, have you have you got a week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that the steel the steel guides are in stock, John. Oh, good. Okay, because I like T like TSC twenty five is the number. Oh, geez. Well, I'm I'm glad I'm sitting with the slot car gods. That's is awesome. Just well, so I just have look at that. Another, to another TSC. Don, Don has one as well. There you go, Don. Yeah. Yeah. How how do they run your plastic track now? They all run great as long as it, you know, with it depends on the tires. Uh yeah, like any other slot car. If you've got if you've got magnets in the car, you can run just about anything on uh for tires. If you're running without magnets, you've got to either use some silicones or uh uh some uh, uh, or you know uh, urethanes or something else. Yeah, I made uh, I made my own forty shore urethanes for the. Uh, for we the used to run field. them with foam tires on the commercial tracks, and they ran they ran fine. The one thirty second scale cars with their little foam tires on a commercial track was great fun. They were they ran very very well. Well, the other thing too, Dennis and and Marco, they're really robust. Like you can beat the snow. Oh yeah, metal chassis, and now metal chassis made a comeback with Revo's lot and all their their, their success. So it might be a good option, and they're fast. I think I think they're. I'm sorry, but I think they're better built. They're slower. They're they don't they don't have wires. Uh, the guide is a little tricky and is a little weird, but uh, they run great. We put, Dennis put together one for me and put a body on it, and I tried the plastic track. They're much faster than any Carrera Scalextric car. Oh yeah, but the great thing is is it's a great great way to use those Carrera bodies or Scalextric bodies that look great and don't have a great chassis. Yeah, here, put here right on a TSRF chassis. There you go. That oh, okay. You're see again. You're ahead of me. Like, why am I even here? Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we, me and me and Dennis, we're we're playing with it. Uh, yeah, we tried the 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 Corvette scale auto one twenty fourth. That's what we have here. 
D6. Yeah, it's a little bit out of uh, the wheelbase, a little bit out. Well, you can play with it a little bit. Yeah, with yeah you can bit. a little bit. We did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. So this is kind of cool. Uh, but I think the correct body would be the DRM. 962. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, no. yeah. And in one thirty second, fly bodies are just great on those chassis. Yeah, if they fit, yeah, we need to figure out. We need to figure out. We need to see what Philippe has and what he's willing to sell, and maybe a rebranding and maybe re-releasing them ready to go. Just make them an offer you can't refuse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it'll be it'll be easier to get shot first. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's good. That's great news. Yeah. No, if you could, if you could get that going again, that'd be, that'd, yeah, that'd be a... it's, it's a plan. It's still a plan. It's still trying to figure out, but yeah. It's... But he, what I love that... to do is to put a vacuum form body on the 132nd scale ones. Oh, yeah. And uh, of course, I managed to piss off two sets of people that way by putting a, 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 a true scale uh, body on a TSRF car. Mm -hmm. and, but they worked really nicely that way. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But e even the center section that's made of nylon, I've used those for scratch building as well. They're great. Yeah. yeah. And the 132nd scales are better than the, the, the 24th scale, that nylon section is a little, is a little um, um, flexible. And so it, it tends to chatter, especially if you if you put foam tires on it. Mm. But, um, you know, what we used to do was to drill a hole through the whole thing and put an extra screw at the back. And then you could tighten it down and start to to uh, influence the flex a little bit. But um, yeah, if there was any if there was any real uh, um, uh, weakness in the design, that's where it is is in the in the flexibility of the of the rear end of the car. Well, that but the center section for the one twenty fourth and the one thirty second are the same, aren't they? It's just the metal pan that's really different. Well, the center section for the 124 scale is a lot bigger and longer and oh, wider. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Cool. That's very cool. All right, guys. So you guys are all invited. I hope to see at least 45% of you here in August. Yeah. I know that uh, the one, Jim, and Dennis will be here. So I need three more. <laughs> oh, there you go. It, what, what, Michael, you, you would you go down? I would consider it, yeah. Rick. Cool. Well, listen, I, oh, oh my, well, that's a great way to sign off, guys. That, Marco, thanks for popping in. I really, really appreciate it. No, I always, I always when I'm, I'm available, I try to pop in because I, 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 I want to hear about the new stuff. You guys are always developing new stuff, so. Oh, well, actually, it's just old stuff you've never heard of. Probably. <laughs> what, what, what about the, 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 the race that D1 was putting together the oh the world yeah well, well and i put i put a small proxy together too just as yeah a the proxy yeah 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 the one, well, they, the one is is that happening or not yes it's definitely happening we're uh um i have my committee that okay be doing, uh, they'll be reviewing everything and we'll be getting it out in the next week to two weeks okay i still don't have any news on the motors but i will gladly provide it you'll have well, your, did you get my email your... okay. i did i did i responded to it okay thank you Sorry, John, right. you're going to say something? Uh, Juan will have his people contact Marco's people. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Well, that, that that's it for this week, and we'll see you next week. Wait, bye. All right. Take care. Thank you. Hey, Marco. Oh, did you take off?